Hello folks, welcome back. Pastor Bob from Place of Refuge. Today, the message I have is called, While Men Slept. And we're going to be in Matthew 13, uh, verses 24 through 30. All right, so here we go. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, this is my text, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. And when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou not put good seed in the field? From whence then has it tares? And he said unto them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Without then that we should go and gather them up. But he said, Nay, lest we ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Now this is uh, an interesting, a parable that we have is the meaning, I'm sure you probably know, it's an example by like a doctrine or a precept is illustrated. And in the Greek it says it's an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And that's what we got here. It's, it compares, and it compares in one thing to another. And that's what it is here. It could be a similitude as well. Well, it's likened or compared, which sowed good seed in this field. Now that is obviously, you guys know what that means. You just, you know, you scattered the seed. His field. Now it's interesting. He sowed his field. The field, it's the country, the farms, county seats, country seats, excuse me. His field, his country, his farms, and his county seat. Who? God. Amen. Psalm 24, 1. And this is why I want to stress this. The field is the world. All right? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell in it. That's Psalm 24, 1. But while men slept. Now, this is my text. His enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. <clears throat> now, that while men slept, in the Greek means to be spiritually asleep, secure and unconcerned in sin, or indolent and careless in the performance of duty. It means to yield to sloth and sin and to be indifferent to one's salvation. Now, I hope that's not you, but the thing is, is listen, we're in, I mean, are, are we in the last days? It's very possible. We don't know exactly, but you guys know. Um, it looks pretty pretty grim right at times, but you know, but God's still in control. So we don't want to be spiritually asleep. So this enemy, okay, when you see an enemy, it's an adversary, obviously, enemies of the cross. And the devil, who is the most bitter enemy of what? The divine government, any kind of God's government or anything, he hates it. He so tears. It's a kind of a darnel. A darnel is like, a, it looks exactly like it. It re resembling wheat, except the grains are black. Now, I've seen pictures of this, and I would encourage you to get on the computer, maybe after this message, and look, put in wheat and tares images, and see, you can see. And there's really good things. It looks green. And as it goes along, usually in the end, you'll see the wheat kind of curl down where the tear is straight up. You know, you'll see it in different stages if you look on that. More of a humble. Our Lord knows how to, to make a parable. You know, the, the wheat are humble, bow down. The tares are sprung up like pride. Okay, so verse 26, But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. Now the word fruit here is the fruit of the trees, vines, of the field, plants, and earth. However, Matthew 7.20 says this, Wherefore, by their fruit you shall know them. The fruit determines the authenticity, right, of the real wheat in this case. Or, may I submit, you know people by their works. You know if they're living for Christ or not. If they say they're a Christian and they're living like the world, you don't want to be a judge, but you wonder, you know. So, verse 27, So the servants of the household, householder came and said to him, Sir, did this now, now sow good seed in the field? From whence has these things? Where did this come from? <clears throat> he sold beautiful, handsome, let me give you all the words, 
excellent, excellent in its nature and characteristics, and therefore well adapted to its end. They're genuine and approved. Yes, good seed was sown. Amen. So it means it's beautiful by the reason of purity of heart and life, and hence praiseworthy. Again, that's what the Greek says, verse 28. And he said unto him, An enemy has done this. The servant said unto him, Well, thou then that we should gather them up. Shall we? Okay, well, let's just pull them up. No, first, the enemy, it's used uh, of men at enmity with God in their sin. And the devil, who is the most bitter enemy of, usually it's the devil, of divine enemy of God. He's hostile to the things of the Lord. Verse 29. But he said, Nay, lest while we gather them tares, you root up also the wheat. So root up means, obviously, to pluck and pluck up by the roots. Now, in studying this, there were other people that would say, you know, like the roots sometimes intertwine. So you got wheat, tares. So when you pull up the tares, you will pull up the wheat. Wait till the harvest, okay? So you and I are living in a time when tares are growing amongst the wheat in the church. And unfortunately, I know I'm redundant on this. I say it all the time. But pastors uh, who stand on God's word are not the ones I'm talking about. The ones that compromise God's word. You know, and they're in these churches and stuff, and people feel comfortable. And it's okay to feel comfortable in your church if you trust. But if it's if they're yielding to sin and they're slothful in their duty, something's up. Okay? And so you're going to have some challenges coming up. And so make sure that you're walking worthy and make sure you're in a good church that teaches the Word. Amen? So John 6, 63 said, It is the Spirit that quickened the flesh. Excuse me. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profit nothing. And then it says this, the words I speak to you, they are spirit and life. Now the life here is zoe, it's the absolute fullness of life, life real and genuine, a life active and vigorous, devoted God. A little side scripture there. Now let's go back, we're in verse 30 now. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye therefore first the tares, and bind them up in bundles to burn them, and gather the wheat into my barn. Well, the harvest is the act of reaping, but it's figurative of the gathering of men into the kingdom of God. Okay, the final judgment, when the righteous are gathered into the kingdom of God, and the wicked, here's a very sobering thought, and the wicked are cast into hell forever. Is that my opinion? No, that is what I got out of right, the Greek. I use the Strong's and I use another Greek dictionary of the word. And so that's what you get. So the tares and the wheat, they're going to grow together. You're going to have that together in the churches. You're going to have people that you think are Christians, and they're going to think, wow, I can't believe so-and-so was this way. God knows the heart, but you'll also know them by their fruits. Now, if they've just come into church and they got a lot to deal with, amen to that. We all did. We'd come to the church. None of us were perfect, and we still are not. But the thing is, is we need to walk worthy of our calling. And, you know, you, you get it. So I want to take another side scripture about, it's in Romans chapter 13. All right. Now here's uh, chapter 13, verses 11 through 14. And that knowing the time, that now is the high time to awake out of sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent, the day is at hand, let us there Cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not rioting, not drunkenness, not chambering and wantonness, not strife and enmity. Put on you the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Very powerful, just like the tares and stuff. It says now, today is the day, my friends. Now means the immediate future, now and presently. Knowing the time that now is high time. It's a certain definite season right now. Now is the high time to do what? Awake. You and I need to awake. And that means to cause, to rise up, to arouse from sleep, to raise up. Now this is to wake from sluggishness or you know, lethargic. That's what it means and used here. Out of sleep. And again, here in Romans 13, 11, it is used figuratively of spiritual sleep or sloth. And again, a different Greek word, but it's very similar to the one that we just read in Matthew 13, 25. They are different Greek words, but almost the interpretation is almost identical 
So just remember, spiritual sleep. We don't want to be in spiritual sleep, and you'll be right on there. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Now, when did you get saved? Okay, whenever you got saved, 5, 10, 20, 50 years ago, the, <laughs> the Lord's return is getting closer and closer. So since we first believe, he's closer. How many would agree with that? Amen? It's true. Maybe the hour, it might be hour by hour. We don't know. But be ready. Then it says this in verse 12. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Now, there are Christians that sometimes they're indifferent to their salvation. They think, well, me and God's got an agreement. You know, I don't think it's the big deal that he, you know, I do this. Well, folks, listen, it is a big deal. If it says in the word, you're not supposed to be doing it, do not be doing it. I don't mean to be harsh. I've had a change. I'm hoping that you have to change. The night is far spent. It means to go forward in its advance. It's proceeding. The day is at hand. What does that mean? The last day of this present age? Yes. The day Christ will return from heaven? Yes. Raise the dead, hold the final judgment, and his perfect kingdom is at hand. It's to bring near and it's approaching. You guys know as well as I do, we've never seen it like this today. All the countries are having problems. Therefore, cast off the works of darkness. Now, that cast off means to put away or side and to remove. Now, I don't, I don't know all of you who are watching this, but if there's things that God has put in his finger on and say, you need to change this, may I submit to you, today is the day to do that. Please do it. Cast off or renounce the works of darkness. Now, when you see that darkness, it's scotus, all right? And it means, um, it's, it, it looks like scotus. I think it's pronounced scotus, S-K-O-T-O-S. Ignorance, rep, respecting divine things and human duties. So well, there are things that sometimes, you know, if, if we're new Christians, we go, oh, I didn't know that was bad. Well, amen. Then now's the time to change. And it says, so ignorance respecting divine things in heaven uh, or in human duties and accompanying the ungodly sin of morality. Now, we know ungodly sin of morality is not good. So let's cast off these works. Here's what it says, another side scripture, if you will, Ephesians 5, 8. For ye were sometimes darkness, not in darkness, notice what it says, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now ye are light of the Lord, walk as children of light. And I can't emphasize that enough. All of us need to do it, myself included. Okay, let's go back to Romans 13. Let us put on the armor of light. Now, the armor, that's obvious. It's a warfare or weapon of light. This word is a very interesting word. It's called phos. It's P-H-O-S, and it's pronounced phos. It's the true knowledge of God in spiritual things, Christian piety in moral and spiritual truth. Now, in my... Greek dictionary, I have two of them, okay, and the one that I have is an early work, and it said phos here, which means light, is never kindled, never quenched. Where does that come from? There's only one person that I know like that. It's one God, amen? He's always, always was and always will be. It's never kindled or never quenched. Praise God. Verse 13, let us walk honestly as in the day, not rioting and in drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and in envying. Now, I broke these down, and each time that I do that, I learn more and more. The word walk, anytime you see walk in the Bible, it usually is your conduct of life or you, the way you're regulating your life. It's your walk. Amen? Walk what? Honestly. Decently and a seemingly matter. And honorable. Not rioting. Now, this is revelings. Riotous conduct. Drunkenness. Drinking parties. That last late at night. Indulge in revelry. Now, <clears throat> Both in the Strong's and my Greek word study dictionary, they make mention of Bacchus. When I looked up the word rioting in the Greek, <clears throat> now this is what it means. It means riotous procession, parading through the streets with torches and music in honor of Bacchus. And revelry, all kinds of impurity and obscenity of the grossest kind. So I've come across this a number of times. And I thought, well, this time I'm going to break it down. So if you go in to, again, the computer, through the wonderful technology that we have today, and put in Bacchus, the god of wine, images, and you'll see a bunch of grotesque-looking things. I did this for church. 
and you can see. So it was just a time of revelry and debauchery and rioting and drunkenness parties, okay? Sound familiar? It sure does. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not rioting and drunkenness, nor chambering. Now, chambering, it means cohabitation. Now listen to this, whether lawful or unlawful. As I understand it, this indicates debauchery and um, that type of thing, okay? And so what would be cohabitation unlawful? I know I'm going to step on some toes, but I love you enough to tell you the truth. It's living together. Things that you're doing that's not right, all right? And again, I'm not perfect, believe me. We all need to work on things, but may I submit to you, today's the day of salvation, today's the way, and now to change, amen. Wantonness, when you see that word wantonness, it's an unbridled lust. It means excess, insatiable desire for pleasure. It's lustfulness. Not in strife. What's that? Contention. It's wrangling. There are people that just love strife. That's what it's talking about. And this is, means the love of strife. Okay, we all have contention once in a while, and we deal with it and move on. Praise the Lord. But this here means they love that strife. That shouldn't be part of our, our, our repertoire, if you will. And envying, us, which is obviously jealousy and anger. But it says, put on ye the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. Provision, I know it, that means providential care, and to know ahead the lust. Now, when you see lust in here, and I would encourage you to look this up in the Strong, it, it really um, it describes it very well. It's, it's uh, I think it's 1939. I think I put 1936 here, but I think I wrote it wrong. I think it's 1939. And if not, look at 1936, but I'm almost positive it's 1939. But this is what, and this is why it sticks with me every time I think of the lust. It means desire for what is forbidden. Think about that, craving. Now, remember why I use all these scriptures. It's the spiritual sleep I'm talking about, indifferent to one's salvation. Now, you think about the desire for what is forbidden. What did Adam and Eve do? <laughs> you know, there was they had any tree of the garden, only this one, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That was what was forbidden. And they had a desire. They just were flirting with it. You know, and the devil, of course, enticed. You know the story. But my point was, it was a desire for the things... <laughs> For, that are forbidden. And a lot of times, that's what we struggle with. God says not to do this, but don't flirt with it. You know, Adam and Eve did, and they blew it. But you know what? We're in that, you know, we've all inherited that DNA, so we all have that choice, whether to desire for what is forbidden or not. Hallelujah. Let's let's choose life. Amen? Now, there's, um, it's interesting how oblivious we can be when we're spiritually asleep. All right? In physical believe it or not, and I'll prove that to you in a minute. Now, there's a nice story in the book of Judges. <clears throat> and I'm going to be in Judges 16. Most of you know this. This is about Samson. All right? We're going to be looking at verses 4 through 21. So I call this a strong man and a woman. All right? So I'm going to start with verse 4. Just bear with me and follow along in your Bibles. I would encourage you. We're only looking at a few verses here. And it came to pass afterward, and we're talking about Samson now, that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. The Lord And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her, and said unto her, Entice him, and see wherein his great strength lieth, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him, and we will give thee, each one of us, eleven hundred pieces of silver. And Delilah said to Samson, so now she goes back, Tell me, I pray, wherein is thy great strength and life? Wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee? And Samson said unto her, If they bind me with seven green withs that were never dry, then I shall be weak and be as other men. The Lord of the Philistines brought her up seven green withs, which had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Now there were men lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber. And she said unto him, The, Philist the Philistines be upon thee, Samson, and he break it with the withs, as a thread of tow is broken when it touches the fire, so his strength was not known. Goliath said to Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me, and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thou mightest be bound? And he said unto her, If they bind me fast with new ropes that never were occupied, then shall I be weak and be as another man. 
Delilah therefore took new ropes, bound him therewith, and said to him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And there were liars in wait, abiding in the chamber, and he brake them from off his arms like a thread. And Delilah said to me, Hitherto thou hast mocked me these, and told me these lies. Tell me where thou with, wherewith thou uh, mightest be bound, and said unto her, If thou weavest the seven locks of my head with a web. So that's what he said then. She fastened it with a pen, and said to him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awakened out of his sleep, and went away with the pin of the beam and the web. So now here where Delilah extracts his secret. And she said unto him, How canst thou say I love thee when thy heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. And it came to pass, when she pressed him daily with her words, and urged him, so that his soul was vexed unto death. Then he told her all his heart and said to her, There has not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go for me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. So then when Delilah saw that he told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he has showed me all of his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came unto her and brought, check this out, they had the money with them in their hand. And she made him sleep. My text again, when men sleep. Now this is more in a physical sense. And she made him sleep upon her knees, and she called him for a man, and she and she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off seven locks of his head, and she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. What happens? And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. He woke out of sleep and said, I will go out as all other times and shake myself, and wish not that the Lord has departed from him. And then the sad part in verse 21, the last verse, but the Philistines took him, put his eyes out, brought him down to Gaza, and bound him with feathers, brass, and he did grind in the prison house. Now, when you look at verse 4, it says, Now it came to pass afterwards that he loved a woman. This is a sad story. Now, Samson didn't do a very good job choosing his women. His first wife snitched on him, about the member, she had a riddle, and she, you know, they said, we're going to kill you and your father and all that. And so she told him, and so he lost that whole setup. And now we got Delilah. So Samson didn't do well with the women. The first, basically, he was betrayed with his riddle, and then now Delilah is another choice, makes a bad choice. Now, here's, here's my point. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Why? For what? Fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion has light with darkness? May I submit to you? Nothing. Amen? Folks, I don't know, maybe some of you guys are thinking about getting married. Maybe you're going to go into a business with a partner, and, and they might be good people. But listen, unequally yoked means they're going to have a different value system than you will. And, and it, it's a train wreck waiting to happen. My point is to work with Christians. Now, I'm not saying Christians are perfect. Some of them are not. But you know what my heart is. Don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Verse 5, and the lords of the Philistines came up. Now check this out right away. Entice him and see where his strength is. And by what means we may prevail against him that we may what? Bind him to afflict him and we will give thee every one of the 1,100 pieces of silver. Now I don't know what these silver were. I don't know if they, not silver were, but silver were. Um, it's 1,100 pieces, okay? At the time I looked this up, for one ounce silver, it was $22.51. So that would be for $1,100, it would be if one person, it'd be $23,661 when this was, I think it was a few days ago that I looked at. And if there was two, it says 47322 Now here's the interest, the lords of the Philistine. We don't know how many lords there were. And it would go on for that. So the stage is set. And Delilah said to Sam, and tell me where I pray thee, wherein the great strength lieth, and wherewith thou might mightest bound to be afflicted. She even tells him, and he's not getting this. How would you like if I come over to your house <laughs> and I say, hey, where do you keep your treasures? Where do you keep the key to your safes or something like that? Wouldn't that just raise a, you know, a little concern? Like, what the heck do you want to know that? You know? <laughs> wherewith thou might be bound, which is in prison, or held captive, or to afflict thee, or oppress, weak, and mass, mishandle, and be humiliated. That's what those mean in the Hebrew. And Samson, she, he starts playing around with her. 
if they bind me with seven green withs, and that were never dried, shall I be weak? And I'll be like other men. And so what happens? Immediately, the lords of the Philistines brought up seven green withs, which had not been dried. And she bound him with them. Now, I don't know how she did this or if they were playfully. You just look at this and you think, is he that thick? Amen. The word green here means moist or new. It's a lot of, it even actually said bowstring. So again, this is, some of it's lost in antiquity, but it says green, which means moist and new. With the widths, what's that? It's a cord. It would seem it's like some kind of a, a fresh cord. That's about as best I could find in the Hebrew. Verse 9. Excuse me. Now when now there were men lying in wait, <laughs> abiding with her in the chamber. Talk about setting them up. And she said unto him, Philistines be upon thee, same as and broke the whips, and the thread tore up, broken when it touches the fire. So it just kind of melted away. He, the word tow means tow is a is a weak rope. It's a coarse and broken fiber from flax or hemp or some spiritual or uh some similar, not spiritual, similar material. String is a weak fastener, amen. So compared to a regular rope or cord, and it's easily snapped out. And that's what's used here in 16, verse 9. Verse 10, And Delilah said to Samson, Behold, thou mock, you mock me. Really? Yeah. And told me lies. Now tell me, I pray, wherewith thou mightest be bound. I'm going to work this again, folks. Tell me where your treasures are at. It would raise concern. By this time, you'd probably think, Why are you asking me? You know, you'd want me to hit the road. You mock me, you deceive me, you trifle with, and you led, led on falsely. That's what it means. And he said to her, if they bind me fast with new ropes, never were occupied, then I shall be weak and be as another man. Now the new ropes here, it's interwoven foliage, you know, intertwined. Ropes formed into a, to be strong and binding prisoners. So it gets a little stronger here. Delilah therefore took new ropes. And bound him wherewith and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. Now, wouldn't you guys get this? She binds him, does it again. And there were liars in the way. I like, the liars here are like the ambushers. I like the term liars. It's not meaning lying to Seth, although it does mean ambush. There were ambushers in wait, a binding in the chamber, and he break them, snapped them off from his arms like a thread. And Delilah said to Samson, Here though too thou mock me. And told me lies. Can't you? You told me lies. You know, you can hear. Tell me wherewith thou might be bound. And he said unto her, If thou weavest the locks. Now notice this. The this, this seven locks of my head with the web. So now we started getting closer to revealing a secret. That's what happens when we start flirting. We get closer and closer to failing. All right. The weaving Samplin's hair into a web. It was like a pattern. I don't know what kind of pattern. Maybe you women know. Uh, it's a, that what's what it meant in the Hebrew dictionary. Samson allowed himself to get a little closer. Secret. You know, it's a dangerous waters when we start revealing things. Amen. Verse 14. And she fastened it with a pin and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awakened out of his sleep and went away with the pin of the beam with her web. All right. And then here she comes again in verse 15. And she said unto him, How can... Now, how canst thou say, I love thee, when thy heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength. Wouldn't you start to get it that this woman's trying to pin something on this guy? And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her word, and urged him that his soul was vexed unto death. In other words, she poured her heart out. He reciprocated by pouring his heart out. Verse 17, that he told her all of his heart, be careful. Again, we're unequally yoked now, my friend. And said unto her, there has not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite, hallelujah, unto God from my mother's womb. If, if I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak in like any other man. So what happened? You know the story. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all of his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, some galley, saying, Come up once, for I know he has showed me all of his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up. Now notice they got the money. They were convinced this was it. They had the money in their hand. That's what it said. Verse 19. And she made him sleep, my text, upon her knee. Now this is a physical sleep. So when you sleep, a lot of times you're at repose, you rest. You know, you're, you're sleeping. A lot of them, 
he can fall. But he must have really been sleeping because it said, and she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off his seven locks of his head. I am a light sleeper. If somebody even just touches me lightly, I'm up immediately, you know. And she began to afflict, and she began to afflict him. Get that. And his strength went from him. The sleep here is just Samson to fall asleep. It, it doesn't say spiritual sleep. But you could see where he was spiritually sleeping. And here he allows himself to open up. And then this woman didn't mean good for him. And she actually betrayed him. And she said, the Philistines be upon Samson. And he woke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as other times before and shake myself. He never said that in the other one. Something's up. And wits not that the Lord departed from him. Can you imagine? Folks, listen. Our Lord says he'll never forsake or leave us. May I submit that's the truth. But here's the problem. A lot of times we flirt with the enemy and we start getting a little closer and a little closer and then we get bit by the devil and then he spits in our face. And so just see, learn from this story. There was a way out here in these verses that preceding that, you know, it would be like me coming over three times saying, hey, where's your treasure? You think, Get the heck out of here. I'm not going to show you where all my treasure is. In fact, you must not mean well for me. I'm going to ask you to leave, please. You know? And that's just how this was. But the Philistines took him, put his eyes out. That's what the devil does. He puts our spiritual eyes out and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with feathers and brass. And he didn't grind it. You know, or, or he did grind, excuse me, in the prison house. What a terrible, terrible story. My point is this. When men sleep, when women sleep, when you and I, we're not on our game. The devil is right there. And please, don't flirt with the devil. When you're sleeping spiritually, the devil knows. You know, he always starts subtly. You know these great men and women of God that have fell. I don't judge them. You think they woke up one day and say, hey, I'm going to screw my life up? No. The devil, a little bit, a little bit here, a little bit there. You get closer and closer to reveal the secret or your weakness, and the devil comes and bites you. Amen? So let us be alert and walk as children of light. Amen? All right. Well, God bless you. I hope this uh, ministered to you. And so again, let me pray. Father, thank you. I pray that, Father, we all understand and let us not flirt with the devil because when we sleep, we're doomed. So, Father, we just give you praise today. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, folks. Until next week, we'll see you later.